Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, if you don't know, my mother passed away. If you do know, I want you to, to understand how much we love our church and how thankful we are. We had the funeral here, and I am just incredibly proud of my church family. You all were so good to my family, uh, despite Uncle Robert being in it. And uh, I told Scott it was it was packed, and I said, "Hey, this might be a a good church growth idea. You know, we just start having a weekly Christmas reunion every Sunday." But the problem is, is I don't think we have the budget for the food. <laughs> but I did. I wanted to just say thank you all so much, and, that, and we're just really, really proud of our church family. Let's stand and worship. We 
supposed to do. I mean, do I have to say it? I've been saying it. I've been saying it now for four years. Oh, I'm sorry. I've been here seven. My wife just corrected me. Good Lord. Good morning, everyone. How are you all? Okay, they're not listening yet. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Try that again. How are you all? Good. You're good. Okay, I'm so glad. Happy July. It's July already. Um, today is Communion Sunday, and we will celebrate at the end of service. And then this evening is our July 4th celebration, and it is at 8 p.m. But we need volunteers, so don't come at 8 p.m. Come at 7, and you can help. Um, and then fireworks start at dark. All right, guys, I've noticed something, so I'm going to talk about it because I enjoy talking. So um, I've noticed that a lot of people recently are trying to fit in, like they want to fit in. And I've noticed maybe it's my age, but even my friends, like if something's not in style that they're wearing, like they'll just completely change their style. They'll be like, well, those Air Maxes aren't in, so I'm wearing the next ones. And so this is like a problem because, well, why are we all trying to be the same people? But then um, there's another problem. We live in a world where Christianity isn't really accepted. It's not really in right now. Yeah, and yeah. many people want to fit in, even Christians. And so they'll just like act like Christians when they fit in acting like Christians. But the minute that that doesn't fit in with who they're with, they'll change it. They'll deny that they even know God. And here's what the Bible says about this. It's in Matthew 10, 33. It says, but everyone who denies me here on earth, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Hold on. Think about that. Matthew 10, 33. But everyone who denies me here on earth, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. If you think you could just deny you know God when you want to fit in, well, you better not get upset when he denies he even knows you. It doesn't matter what reputation or name that you hold. You could be like Pastor Scott says, preach the paint off the walls. But if you don't show Jesus everywhere else you are, you just preach one good sermon, that's not going to cut it. Don't be a fake. Jesus literally died for us, and we, don't want, we just want to fit in. We don't want to share God's love everywhere we are. And so as we go into prayer, I want you to think about if you are acting like a Christian, sharing your faith everywhere, or if you're two-faced and acting like a Christian part of the time and denying him the other. Amen. Yep. Yep. That's right. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer right now. Let's just go ahead and... All repent. <laughs> Amen. Uh, let me give you a few more things this morning. Uh, if you're joining us online, we welcome you and thank you for um, joining us in this service. Um, uh, tonight, it, again, is our, our uh, fireworks fellowship. Um, so that begins at 8 p.m. Uh, hopefully the rain is going to hold off and I need you to pray and intercede that that's going to happen. 
all right? And, uh, but uh, 7 p.m. we'll meet here. We're gonna get the bounce house out, things like that. We're gonna make popcorn and uh, hot dogs uh, to give out, uh, as well as, as typically what we do is, is have a watermelon eating contest and watermelon for everybody. Um, that being said, uh, if you possibly have received uh, a letter from me already, if you have given to New Harvest or a member of New Harvest or a donor at New Harvest, uh, then we've sent out a letter this past Thursday regarding some budget cuts that we've made. And so I will not go deep into that until you read the letter, uh, but I just wanted to let you know that that has been sent. Uh, again, I mentioned before that we had had some, uh, the first quarter was not very good. Well, uh, I was trying to wait and to see how the second quarter would turn out, but I'll be honest with you, the second quarter was worse than the first quarter. So uh, that being said, uh, we went ahead and made some budget cuts and were a little bit aggressive. Um, so I say all that to say this, when you come tonight at 7 p.m. to help us set up, bring a watermelon with you, if you would, please. <laughs> all right? <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you, and I appreciate you, and I, th I appreciate your faithful giving uh, for those of you who are giving, and I pray that um, sort of in the midst of all of this that it may motivate some of you uh, who are may not be giving uh, or may not be tithing to begin. I would appreciate that. Um, at some point in time, I'm going to talk more extensively about giving, uh, but not right now. Uh, next Sunday, uh, we will be out of town for our, our family vacation, but Brother Richard Wright is going to be preaching here. Amen. Make sure you'll be looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that, uh, to watch online or, or watch the video afterwards. But um, So um, this morning, as we begin, uh, we're going to have a more extensive prayer time again as Participatory prayer time at the end of service, but we're going to go ahead and do our typical uh, prayer time right now. Uh, so, are there any prayer requests that we need to pray over this morning? Houston? Uh, I have a friend that passed away like about a month ago. Oh. And it's up here. Just pray for him. Pray for the family. Absolutely. Prayer requests this morning, Kimmy. Sure, absolutely. Yes, Julia. I'll be receiving radiation treatment this week. Yeah. We need to pray for. Yes, pray for Julia. Uh, some of the cancer has returned, and so she's going to begin uh, radiation treatments. I think eight weeks. Is that correct? Not sure. Okay. All right. So some of you would gather around uh, Julia uh, and pray for her. Yes. Okay. We'll pray for the family. Absolutely. Yeah. Did you raise your hand? Yeah. I'm looking at you. For my grandma. Yeah. Becca's the grandma Grutenhaar, the Dutch side of the family, uh, fell in cracked her hip and uh, fractured her pelvis. I thought that was your hip. Yeah, anyway. It, it's not good. It's, let's just say that. Uh, she needs prayer, absolutely. Um, Scott, for my mom, uh, she's having a lot of PVCs right now. It's really bothering her. So we keep her in prayer for her. Yes, please. definitely. We'll pray for Carol. You can talk. You can talk all you want to. This is my great aunt Joyce, by the way, uh, who you've been praying for. Uh, last year she had a stroke, and this uh, this year she actually had a uh, tumor removed from her colon, and that was just really a few weeks ago, believe it or not. And so I went up and got her and brought her back here. Yes, sir. I just can't tell you. Okay. <laughs> tell you how much I'm not going to get through this I'm sorry but I am so grateful yes, for your prayers 
am so grateful to the Lord that he answered them. Amen. I tell you, I have, I just, I got all kinds of stories I could tell you. This started July 9th of last year when I had this slight stroke. And, uh, and then it just went on and they couldn't get over because I'll be 90 and sometime, October. <laughs> and uh, they just didn't think there was any way I could come through that the way that I am. And I'm even back to driving. I don't drive a lot now, but I can drive and I've been, I went through a whole test and had to go to Cincinnati and do their whole test of driving and everything to be recertified. So I've been through an awful lot and there's no way I could have done it without the answered prayers. And I've, I'm telling you, if somebody says something about praying, I'll pray for you. Buddy, do it. <laughs> and you just learn how much the Lord really does love his children. Yes, yes, and the different things, it's like every day I have so many blessings and little miracles of things that happen that are actually miracles. There's no way. And how he goes before you and prepares that, that is absolute truth. Absolute truth. And uh, I just wanted to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for all your prayers. And the Lord certainly has answered them. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad. Joycey normally comes down for the 4th of July fireworks and things. And so this is a great, great that she could be here with us. Allie? Amen. She's cancer free if you didn't hear that. Amen. 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 Oh, Allie got a good report that the, the cancer was not in her lymph nodes or any other thing that they have taken. She possibly will have to have some radiation, so just continue prayer. Uh, yeah. But uh, right now, her, her report is clean. Amen. Hey. Amen. God's a healing God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let's go to prayer this morning. Let's begin with the uh, Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debts as we forgive those who have debted against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the praise reports that we celebrated this morning, the praise reports of uh, Joycey and the healing that's come through her body, Lord Jesus, at your mighty right hand, Lord Jesus, and we give you praise. Pray that you would continue to recover, to continue to stay in good health. We give you praise that Allie is cancer-free this morning, Lord Jesus. We give you praise for that, Father. Pray that you would continue to renew her body and keep her reports clean, Father. Lord, we pray for Julia Lee this morning specifically, that you would touch her as she's getting ready. Lord, so many times before you've been faithful to deliver her from cancer. And Father, I pray that this would just be another testimony of your mighty right hand of healing, Lord Jesus, that stretched out towards us. And Lord, I pray that you would renew her body, that you keep her healthy, Lord Jesus, during uh, the entire process of radiation. And Lord, that your strength would be her strength. Father God, and that you would renew her in the name of Jesus, we pray. Father, we pray for Matt, uh, Lord Jesus, who is 
uh, neighbor of Scott is having uh, treatments, Lord Jesus, for cancer also. Pray you bring healing to his body. Also, this dear lady who's uh, having breast cancer treatments now also, Father. Stretch out your hand towards them, Lord, and let her t t testimony and Scott's testimony be like the ones we celebrated this morning, Lord, we pray. Father, we ask that uh, you continue to touch Pastor Hammond and balance his blood pressures, Lord Jesus. Uh, uh, Father, we pray that you would touch these families that have been affected by death, but Houston's friend Sierra, Lord Jesus, her family, Lord, that you be with them. Give comfort and peace, like the peace that was described this morning, Lord Jesus. Also for uh, this family, Lord Jesus, the grandfather passed away, Lord God. I pray that you'd be near to them and that you would, uh, Lord, uh, stretch out your hand to them and bring them strength. Lord, be with the... Uh, uh, Dr. Benaki, Lord Jesus, as he travels with his family, Lord, and been asked for prayers specifically. Be with my neighbor, Lord Jesus, Tommy, who just had a uh, rotator cuff surgery, Lord God, and some, somewhat, some complications along with it, Father, that you would be near to him. And Lord, let that be a testimony that we are praying for him this morning, Lord God, and that he would hear those prayers, feel those prayers, Lord Jesus, of what you're doing in his body and in him, Father God. Lord, we pray for this... Uh, uh, dear lady, Lord Jesus, Angelique mentioned that you would bring healing to her body, that you would stretch out your hands, Lord God, and let there be many, many testimonies, Father, of the healing power and strength of God uh, that we have this availability uh, to receive this morning. We ask these things in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. And the church said together, amen, amen. amen. Would you stand? Let's worship the Lord this morning. And I search the world, but he couldn't feel me. A man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. And you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied Him in your love Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord There's nothing better than you, oh There's nothing, nothing And I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. Because the God of the mountains is the God of the valley. mercy and grace won't find me again oh there's nothing better than you Lord there's nothing better than you Lord there's nothing nothing is better than you oh
Cause there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing, nothing is better than you. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into islands. You turn seas into islands. Draws 
near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise
let's just take a few moments and just be still and quiet before the Lord. And just let's discern this morning if the Lord has a word to speak to his church this morning. feel that somebody else has a word. Somebody else has something that needs to come forward to edify the church this morning. never used you in this gift before. Maybe it's just that you just feel a still, small, quiet voice that's saying, this is something, this is truth that's kind of rising up in the pit of your stomach is where it feels like it comes from. If that's you, just go ahead and just uh, be bold enough to just say what you feel the Lord speaking this morning. You can't outgive God. Ask and it will be given. Seek and you shall find. Come to me. Open your heart to me. And I will show you. I will show you how. Wow, that's a mouthful right there. Amen. Lord, we thank you that you're not too distant from us, Lord, that you cannot speak. You speak to our hearts. You speak through the word. You speak through scriptures. You speak to one another. The psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Lord, I pray that this morning that your word would sink deeply into our hearts, Father. Father, I pray that you would explode your word before our eyes so we can see, that we can understand, we can know how to live this Christian life, we pray. Father, this morning as we were in prayer, I forgot the carol. This morning, Lord Jesus, I pray that you touch her with these issues of the cardiac symptoms, PVCs that she's having. Father, I pray that you would stretch out your hand towards her this morning and that she would receive healing, that her heart function would normalize. We ask this in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. 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 You can be seated. Praise the Lord. Well, this week we are continuing the series on uh, Jesus the Healer. This is the second part of that. If you have uh, missed the first part, I laid a lot of groundwork of interpretation. Oh, this is it. I'm sorry, the kids are getting, I was just, I was just going to go for it. Yes, I know. Can all the kids come up and then we can pray for them. I apologize. Amen. 
Stretch out your hands towards our children this morning. Are they a good looking group of kids today? Yeah. Amen. Father, I pray that you would bless our children, that you would turn your face towards them, let the light of the glory of your face shine upon them. Lord Jesus, reveal yourself to them in an intimate and personal way, Father God, that they might know you and that they might walk in your ways all the days of their life. And even from a young age, Lord, fill them with the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. Baptize them, Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> it's good to have Chris and the boys back from Louisville, isn't it? Yes. Chris Lindsay. Uh, uh, if you haven't seen him for a while, it's because he moved over to Louisville, and he's working at the new Ford plant. Or not the new Ford plant, but he's working at the Ford plant with new vehicles. And the uh, and, uh, Lord has just incredibly blessed him with that job. And, just so proud of him and, and proud of what the Lord's doing in his life. And so. Amen. 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 Praise God. So we're blessed to have Chris back when he's able to be here with us. And so, um, but as I was saying about healing in the regards to healing, would just open up your Bibles. Let's do that. And open your Bible to Luke chapter 1, um, also to Luke chapter 3, and then the advanced Bible move this morning is Romans chapter 8, okay? A few years ago, I began to postulate that Jesus didn't just want to heal individuals. There's a lot of focus put on the healing of the individual. But Jesus wanted to heal whole churches. He wanted to heal entire families. Not just marriages, but he wanted to heal children and their children's children. And even children that are yet unborn. Children that are far off. Generations, I believe, that Jesus wants to heal. It's not just a momentary idea of healing, but God wants to heal, I believe, even businesses, maybe even governments. Believe that or not, I believe that God can heal governments. I want to draw your eyes not only to the systemic nature of healing, but also kind of draw your eyes to the easily recognizable way that systemic disease and illness happens too. It works both ways. I can remember as a child meeting a man in an outreach in Cincinnati on the streets. I remember this man sitting there. I can almost see a perfect image of it. And his hands were so swollen that he couldn't close his hands. I mean, he was sitting against the wall, and we were talking to him. We gave him a track. We uh, spoke to him about the Lord. We prayed for him. All those things that you do in a, in a street outreach or street evangelism. But I couldn't. I couldn't get away from that image of his hands being so swollen like that. And after we had left, I asked my mom, I said, what happened to that man medically that caused his hands to be so swollen? And she said, generally, because she worked at a hospital her whole life in a yeah. lab, she said, generally, a intense and long and sustained uh, symptoms of alcoholism can cause your hands to swell like that. Maybe you've seen people in that condition before. This often happens when we begin to see that disease is systemic too. Yeah. Healing, I believe, is systemic. It happens not only when it occurs in your body, but it goes throughout the entire body of Christ when somebody gets healed. And so it extends beyond. Disease is the same way. It can last from generation to generation in some cases, and not the least of that, sin can be passed from generation to generation. I'm not talking about this like mythically just is catching. I'm talking about cognitive and behavioral means. Yes, when you see something and you grow up into something, it gets passed down from one generation to the next. That's why Solomon said it over and over again. You must not forget. He said, eliminate vexation from your life while you are young. It means whatever sins that tie you up and hold you up, get rid of it in your life while you're young. Because when you're old, it's going to kill you. Yes, sir. 
eliminate it now. Today's the day. Sometimes when somebody gets healed, you often see this overseas and tribal areas and things like that. An evangelist or a missionary goes to that land. And somebody, one person in the tribe gets healed and it breaks wide open the whole territory for the gospel of Jesus Christ. The whole place gets healed. The whole place gets converted for, to Christianity from their pagan religions. Yeah. And subsequently, entire communities get saved and healed too. Let's read the scriptures this morning. Luke chapter 1, verse 35. Luke chapter 1, verse 35. This is the story of the Virgin Mary being visited by the angel, the messenger of God. It says this in verse 35. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come unto you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Yeah. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have in a child in her old age. And she, who is said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. Can we say that together? For no word from God will ever fail. And I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be to me. Fulfill. May it be to me according to thy word. Yes, sir. Then the angel left her. Luke chapter 3, verse 21. Luke chapter 3, verse 21. When all the people were baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in the form like a dove. And the voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love. And with you, I am well pleased. And repeated again from last week is Romans chapter 8, verse 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dwell dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies yes. through his spirit who dwells in you. There is a great paradox of parenting. It's in some ways, at least not all the time, sometimes your children drive you crazy and you can hardly stand them, but there are moments in time where there's an intensity of loving your children that's hard to describe, quite honestly. Yes, yes, sir. And, and one of Wilson's favorite games is to play is corn arm. We call it corn arm. Like, like his arm's a piece of corn and I pretend like I eat it like a typewriter, you know what I mean? And at the end of his arm I say ding and then I bring it back and I, you know... Like a typewriter, you know what I mean? Like Bugs Bunny cartoon type of stuff. Yes, he loves that. And sometimes he'll just get up in my lap and he'll say, Dad, you want some corn arm? You know. <laughs> There's this odd paradox in parenting where you can love somebody so intensely, so powerfully, that, that you literally want to eat them up. You know, that you've heard grandparents say that over and over again. And I think... My diagnosis culturally and psychologically is not that we want to actually cannibalize anybody, but rather that we love them so much that we want them in us. Not on the outside of us, but in us. And I believe these scriptures today indicate clearly that God loves not just you as your soulish person. In the Hebrew, it was called the nefesh, meaning that it was the essence of who you are. But it was beyond that. It was the holistic nature. The spirit loves you so much. The spirit loves your body so much that he wants to inhabit you. He wants to come into you. That the spirit rests on and in us. We often say it. I know it can become cliche. But Jesus wants to come into your heart. He wants to make habitation with you. He wants to live in your life. He doesn't just want to be on the outside, somebody that you greet on your way out and your way coming in, but he wants to be inside you, with you, wherever you go. God loves our physical bodies, and the Spirit loves our bodies and wants to dwell within our bodies. The implications of this idea are far and wide when it comes to healing, and therefore you cannot separate your spirituality from your physicality. They're inseparable. Again, kind of keep yourself in the Hebraic framework of the wholeness or the holistic nature of humanity. Your spirit and who you are, your identity, cannot be separated from your spirituality or your physicality. 
And at times, this both positively and negatively uh, will affect your life. Your spiritual life is often reflected uh, via your physical body. And I know that's positive and negative in both ways. And as I begin to meditate, meditate on this thought, I, I, I thought about Jesus' mother Mary as she came to mind. And Mary becomes this sort of prototype of all spirit-filled people, if you will. Mary's body becomes the dwelling place of the spirit. Before this time, the spirit appears to be sort of free-floating, if you will, uh, without uh, manifesting physical bodily forms. In the same language that's used in the spirit's visitation of Mary, uh, which is also used in the Genesis creation story. Remember the scripture, it says that the spirit hovered over the darkness and the void of the waters, and then God creates. Now we see in, in uh, Luke chapter 1 that the spirit is uh, hovering or overshadowing Mary and the void of her womb. And then the spirit is going to create a dwelling place for Jesus. And so she becomes this kind of prototypical spirit-filled person. That this is what life is like. And, and, and this is the, the context of it. It's the angel announces to Mary, oh, greetings, you who are one who is highly favored of the Lord. Wow. Listen, this is going to be freeing theology, I hope, to all of you today. No matter how much you may not think it's true, no matter how much you may not want to admit it, you are highly favored of the Lord. I am highly favored of the Lord. And just as the Jesus dwelled in Mary and the spirit abided with Mary, so the spirit will dwell in you. Now, I want everybody to say it. We're going to do a lot of repetition today. I am highly favored of the Lord. Say it with me. I am highly favored of the Lord. Just as the Spirit dwelled in Mary. Oh, that was bad. Just as the Spirit dwelled in Mary, so the Spirit will dwell in me. We'll work on that. We're not... We don't have a liturgical background in here, do we? Yes, the same thing that happened to Mary happens at Pentecost. The Spirit hovers over the 120 in the other room, upper room in the form of tongues of fire. The Spirit is poured out on all flesh. Yes, There's no question in the New Testament, as we open up the book of Luke and Acts, which really is just part one of Luke and part two of Luke, Luke is trying to definitively say that God loves your body yes, sir. and that God wants to abide in your body. Yes. He wants you healthy. He wants you whole. And I'm not talking about like this, some weird prosperity gospel. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit wants to abide in you to an extent where it changes everything. It right. heals everything. It extends far beyond the capacity that you're used to. Because that's what baptism or overflowing of the infilling of the Holy Spirit is. I, I believe this so much uh, that if you look at any art form of the day of Pentecost, you'll often see that Mary is often centered in the art. Why? Because it's this theology. I actually texted Father Charles today, Father Charles, or, or last week. I said, Father Charles, is it true that Mary is a prototype of the spirit-filled life? And he said, absolutely, I'm going on vacation, but I'm going to text you some e or resources when I get back. He ex I picked up on that. In Catholic theology, they got it. We didn't get it so much. But in every artistic painting through the Renaissance era and before, you see Mary centered at Pentecost. Why? Because I believe that Mary was going around the Pentecost upper room telling everybody, I told you so. <laughs> I knew what it was like to be filled with Jesus. I knew what it was like to be overshadowed by the manifest presence of the Spirit of God. So much so that you are overflowing and your speech will glorify God everywhere you go. You just can't stop talking about it. You just can't stop telling about the glories of God. Remember, that's what happened in the upper room. The Holy Spirit overshadowed every one of those 120 in the upper room, so much so that it caught the attention of everybody outside. And they said, wow, they're speaking of the glories of God. Yes, sir. 
The Spirit is poured out on all flesh. Jesus inhabits our bodies through the Spirit, and our bodies cannot be separated from the Spirit. And Mary in this way becomes sort of a second Eve, if you will. That Eve gave birth to a son that resulted in death. Cain and Abel, of course you remember the story. The second Eve, Mary, gave birth to a son, and that birth would also result in death, but it would also represent a resurrected body will happen. And so Eve becomes this uh, sort of prototype, the second Eve, if you will. Mary is this prototype of what it means to live the fullness of the spirit life, field life. Now, I've made a revolution uh, this year, resolution this year. That after I had this uh, retreat with Bob Russell uh, uh, last month, uh, uh, he told us, Tom Caldwell and I were sitting in that uh, uh, particular meeting with him. And he said, after 50 years of ministry, I wanted to let you guys know that I would have preached more on hell. <laughs> That's one of those stark things that you're like, well, man, what a negative subject. You know what I mean? It's, just, <laughs> it's not positive. It's not uplifting. <laughs> The only way it's positive is that you're not going there, right? That's, that's the only positive way that you can look at that subject. And, and I thought, man, if this guy in such an incredible and influential ministry can say that after 50 years I would have done this better, I should listen to that. And so you'll hear me from time to time. I'm fulfilling my resolution this morning today by talking about hell. Now, right now, I'm just talking about talking about hell i got to ramp up to it, okay, is what I'm doing. I'm, I'm working towards this. The truth is, is, is that the thing about the views of hell is, is that there are some views of hell that says it's not really a physical place. That it's sort of uh, metaphysical or it's an imaginary construct. And, and there's some, there's some uh, maybe some truth behind that to a certain degree, but it's really not actual. And the reason is, is this, is that if you flip back to the book of Revelation, you find out that both the righteous and the righteous are raised to life bodily. Why in the world, if it was just a spiritual place called hell, why in the world would you be raised back bodily, physically, to stand before Jesus at the judgment seat? It just doesn't make sense, does it? I mean, you would just be raised back spiritually, stand before Christ, and then get put into this odd metaphysical place called hell. But that's not what's happening here. At the end of time, both the righteous and the unrighteous come back in physical form. New bodies for those who believe in Jesus Christ. Now that's the thing about it all right there. Is, is that there's this joy of a celebration of the idea. That we can be raised back into bodily form and our new bodies are perfect. I really can't emphasize this enough. That everyone at the end of time will rise from the dead. Even the wicked will rise. It is a philosophical statement to say that you have an eternal soul. Or you'll often heard it said, even in Christian circles, that you're going to live in eternity. It's just a matter of where you're going to live in eternity. That's really a philosophical statement in and of itself. But what Christianity is concerned with is not about an eternal soul. Christianity is concerned about a risen body, a body that lasts forever, that's risen back, incorruptible, imperfected. That's Christianity. It's the fact that these bodies are wasting away and wearing out, and the Lord's going to renew them. Renew them in a way that is incredibly new, even more new, I believe, than we have possibly the brain capacity to compute at this point in time. That is the blessed hope of Jesus' return for us, a new place to dwell with him. Um, I subscribe to these fuel points for the gas station in front of Walmart. Uh, It's called Murphy, and there's an app you download on your phone, and you get these fuel points. Every time that you, you, you purchase gas, and they'll give you like 10 cents off a gallon if you get 100 fuel points. And, uh, you can also redeem them for other things like, like food or you know, gas station food, which is not really food at all. It's just sugar in a bag. But anyway, uh, and then pops and drinks and stuff like that. But I never redeem them for anything else except for this one time a year, it seems like, that they'll have a contest. And right now they're running a contest. 
and it's that you can win a 2023 Ford F-150 and a camper, a brand new camper made by Coleman. And every once in a while, I just, I feel like I'm gambling. Honestly, it's just like, I just, I enter the contest. Even though the points are free, it's not really gambling. But I enter the contest. I entered it three times this year. I spent 30 points so that I could enter this contest. And the truth of that is this, is that if you came to me and said, Scott, uh, would you want an old car or a new car? 99% of the time, I'd say I'm going to want a new car. Now, if I came to you and said, do you want a new body or an old body, what are you going to answer? I want a new body. And God is faithful. Faithful to not only promise you that, that you're going to receive a new body, but he's faithful to promise you that and show you inklings of that in the power of healing that works in your life. I promise you this, even right down to the fact when you cut your finger and you put Neosporin and a Band-Aid on it, that healing comes every time. That even when you lay hands on another person and pray for them that they'll be healed in the name of Jesus, that healing comes. It's not a question. That is the word of God. You know that, right? Call the elders of the church. Anoint them with oil. Lay hands on them, and they will be healed. Healed. They shall recover. If they sin, they'll be forgiven. That's the promise of God. Nobody questions the fact that you can be forgiven, can you? Nobody's too far from the hand of God. Well, why in the world do we question the fact that you can be healed? It doesn't make sense, does it? Don't question that. Believe that every time healing comes. Let God quantify it. Let him qualify it. Let him do that. Just know that when I pray for somebody, when you pray for somebody, healing is going to come. That's what we need to put our uh, bank into, or bank into that, I believe. Now, you may be wondering, well, the spirit abides and loves our physical bodies in such a degree. Why are we often afflicted with disease and disabilities, dis-ease and disabilities? And that, I believe, is where you learn to walk out your faith. Or as one person said, we learn to walk between miracles. It's really an incredible statement. Learn to walk between miracles. There's often a a process to healing. It's, it's, uh, It's not unusual, I should say, that people often get cured, immediately cured. Amos Young even differentiates that in the original languages uh, that there were cures and healings. There's a difference there. Jesus went around curing often. People would instantly get healed. But you know that even Jesus would pray for people and they wouldn't get completely cured. Remember the man that was blind? And he prayed for him once. And he saw. He said, I think I see people like walking around like trees. And then Jesus prayed for him again. And then he was totally healed. We just shouldn't think it unusual that we have to make multiple prayers for people that need healing. Okay. Did you receive anything this week? I'm about the same. Let's pray again. It's okay. Don't give up. Remember the parables of the persistent widow? Don't give up. Keep moving. I'll never forget the story. I read it. It was a Kenneth Hagin story uh, that I read, and it was about this uh, dear lady who had a 13-year-old daughter. She'd been praying for a daughter who was a quadriplegic for 13 years. She said throughout 13 years of resolved prayer for healing over and over again, she said one day her daughter was sitting there in a wheelchair in the living room, and she was praying for her, and Jesus walked into the house and grabbed her daughter by the hand and picked her up, and she was instantaneously healed. I sent out a video to you this week about Craig Keener talking about incredible healings. Anybody get to watch those videos this week? One of those videos, Incredible Healings. This is all in his book on miracles today. It's one of the books that I'm reading for this series specifically. One of those healings, he says, is about a dear lady who uh, I believe had cerebral palsy or um, uh, some definitive term of, uh, that she was at the last stages of this particular disease and was about to die. And instantaneously she was healed and walked out of the nursing home that she was in. This is actual first-hand occurrence. Watch that video. If you received it, if you need it to me, I I will will put it on uh, Facebook. You can watch it today. Incredible power of God. 
Don't give up is what I'm saying. Keep on praying. Don't lose faith. But in the midst of walking from miracle to miracle, remember that there's joy in walking with Jesus from miracle to miracle. Jesus doesn't come to us in part. He comes to us in physical body like us. Jesus knows what it's like to wake up with your back hurting. Jesus knows what it's like to walk uh, in your shoes, quite literally, or sandals, whatever they may be. Jesus knows what it's like because he had a physical body too. So Jesus came to redeem and heal all of us, our bodies included. This is why St. Athanasius wrote, The word Jesus made himself bearer of the flesh in order that human beings might become bearers of the spirit. And it all circles back around to the spirit. The spirit loves your body and wants to inhabit your body. It wants to live in you, not in part, but in the whole. What I hope you grasp maybe more than anything is that the Spirit loves you, He loves your body, and He rests on you and in you. Now, I was praying about this last night. Um, it was a, a busy, busy week, as you can imagine, uh, this week. And uh, uh, it was one of those things where I, I needed to finish my sermon. And uh, I, I left, I went outside, and uh, as odd as it may seem, I got in the hot tub, and that's where I finished my sermon. But I'm telling you... The glory of God is in a hot tub. I don't know if you know that or not, but he's there. Um, presence of the Holy Spirit came on me in the hot tub. Either that or I was delusional because I was too hot, but one of the weather. Listen to me when I say this, and I mean this with all my heart. As I was praying about this particular sermon, I believe somebody needs to receive this word from the Lord this morning. And I mean it seriously and powerfully. Somebody in here is dealing with a major inferiority complex. Maybe it's because somebody said something to you that was very influential in your life. Maybe it was your dad. Maybe it was a friend. Maybe it was a parent, a teacher. But somebody spoke words that were not the word of God over you. Yes. They spoke, maybe in some cases, curses over you. And it wasn't God's word. Maybe it's for another reason. Maybe it's because you're struggling with your own body image. Somebody else saying something to you about your physical body. And you need to hear God's word very clearly today. That God's favor rests on you. That his spirit did not only desires to, but wholeheartedly yearns to dwell in your body. This morning I want to push back about all those thoughts that you're not worthy, that you're not good enough, that you're not okay enough, that for some reason the Holy Spirit doesn't want to inhabit you, that God doesn't want to do for you what you've seen him do for other people. And that is a lie that Satan has been trying to get you to believe for years and years. Somebody needs to hear this this morning that feels inferior to not only other people, but even in your own self-image, you are distorted. This is the word of the Lord to you today. God loves you. God wants to dwell in you. God wants to fill you with his spirit. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Receive the spirit in Jesus' name. This is why participation, or better said, the embodiment of what we believe and teach is and preach is an imperative. Lindsay hit on it perfectly this morning. It's not just good enough to talk about it, but you have to do it. It's not just good enough to just say, well, this is what the Lord says about this and this, but actually do what Jesus did. Yes. I have referred to this many times in the past. When I was a kid, you know, in the 90s, the WWJD blade bracelets were the biggest thing in the world, in church world. Everybody, we had one of every color, you know what I mean, and wore them all at the same time, usually. What would Jesus do? It was just a postulation. It was supposed to stop you in the midst of probably getting ready to do something you shouldn't do and ask, what would Jesus do? Well, I really think that that's great to think about. But at the end of the day, you shouldn't just think about what Jesus would do. You should do what Jesus did. Yeah. 
Just do it. If Jesus really lived and died and rose from the dead and ascended to heaven and sent the giftings of his Holy Spirit, then guess what? It's not a question of whether you should do something that Jesus did. You just do what Jesus did. Pray for the sick. Pray for yourself when you're sick or you're not feeling good. Lay your hands on your own body and pray. God heals. Yes, sir. God does a great work in us. This is why participation is everything. It's imperative. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Paul speaks about how when you sin sexually, you are actually sinning against your very own body. There's that inability to disconnect your spirit and your physicality. The body and the soul cannot be separated. In this way, James will also say that you cannot say to a brother in need, be well and go on your way, stay warm and well fed. But unless you help them in physical fashion, then the gospel word means nothing. Don't just say, well, I'm praying for you, brother. Pray immediately, right there, because otherwise you'll forget. Yes, just pray. Just do it. Don't just say, I'm praying for you. Do it. Actually pray. It can become real easy in Christianity, especially when you're a pastor. And people constantly come to you with, and I'm not saying this is a bad thing, I'm just saying, constantly come to you with prayer requests. Actually pray about the requests. Don't just say, I'm going to pray. The best thing that you can do is pray right then and there. Right. Then you can say, I prayed for you. Yes. Pray regularly of all times and all things. You see, if your body is a part of the redemption plan of Jesus, then the health of your body is a fruit of salvation which Jesus has acquired for us. Last week I, I quoted some dismal statistics referring to a book called The Body Keeps the Score. Interestingly enough, all trauma creates scars, whether physical, spiritual, or mental. Scars are typically something that people generally try to hide. Scars are a reminder of trauma. They're a reminder of things that they'll never be the same. And we all have them, every one of us, not the least of them in our physical bodies, but uh, scars of the mental status and spiritual status often manifest themselves in other ways, too, in our physical bodies. Scars invoke the memory of that trauma. But that's not all that they're for. The message of scars in the resurrected Christ, because he was scarred in his hands and his feet and his side, they also redeem scars. They redeem suffering in and of itself. The resurrection catches it up into God's glory itself. Scars invoke our memory of these traumas, not just because of the pain inflicted, but often from surgeries that are meant to bring healing. Those memories are sometimes more painful than the original infliction. But what we must remember is that only Christ will bear scars into eternity. Our scars, both visible and invisible, will be completely healed. Amen. And there's always these little inklings of it in this life. One of them because a scar is only a scar because it's healed. A scar is only visible because it's not a wound. It's healed. And that's an inkling of the fact that one day that that scar will be completely erased. That it will be no more. But we will always be reminded every time we see Jesus, we'll see the scars. He'll be the only one in eternity that holds scars in any place on his physical body. Chris Green, one of my professors at Southeastern, said, we need healing. So we can be confident that total healing will come with the coming of God. For now, however, we should not lose sight of the fact that healing looks less like an already achieved victory and more like empowerment for the fight. I think somebody, maybe several of you, maybe I'm talking to you in the same way that I spoke to you before. Somebody needs encouragement for the fight this morning. Somebody needs Encouragement. They need healing. They need peace in their lives so that they can get back out there and fight after they leave service today. 
In high school, I was an offensive and defensive lineman. Um, I played uh, most of the time defensive line, but then my senior year, they moved me to offensive line and became a pulling guard, which was really a lot of fun because you got to hit people real hard. And half the time, they didn't know where you were coming from. And uh, I got used to that. That was fun, and it's time. But one, one play after a series, I had come out, and the only real injury on the football field that I ever sustained uh, was that I think I broke my ring finger. And I remember it was this finger specifically because when I got married, there used to be a big lump on the side of it where it had healed. And I had to, like, snake my wedding ring over top of it to get it on. And I remember coming out of the game in that series and telling the coach, I think I broke my finger. And it was kind of crooked, and there was a big ball on the one side of it. And he goes, go see the trainer. So the trainer, uh, you know, walked over, and he said, Scott, I, I think fingers grow back. Don't worry about it. Or something, <laughs> some quip like that that only trainers, you know, can say. And he grabbed a roll of tape, and he grabbed my hand, and he taped this finger to the other finger right next to it. Yeah. He slapped me on the back. And he said, get back in the game. And ran back out on the field. <laughs> Healing offers us sort of this kind of hodgepodge taping us together so that we can be encouraged and get back out in the field because this spiritual life is a fight. My Lord, do you not feel it anymore on a regular basis? Sometimes I think we just need to slow down and think, not why is all of this happening or why is this happening in my situation. Sometimes you just need to slow down and say, why am I in this spiritual battle right now? This is why for early Pentecostals and for Pentecostals today, the spiritual warfare is so big. We put our concept, our, our, maybe our best salvation metaphor is not about the judicial system, which is often referred to that God set us free, the judge granted us freedom, imputed the charges onto Jesus or something like that. Maybe the best salvation metaphor of Pentecostals is this one, that we are in the midst of the battle and Jesus steps in and delivers us from the battle. I posted an article in my weekly meanderings talking about what church is and what church should remain to be about. This church is not a country club. This church should be in every way a mass unit a mobile medical hospital for the sick, the diseased, the dying, and those that are beat up by Satan. That's what church is. And I, and I hope that, that we learn from anything else, above anything else, that that's what we're here for. And so that metaphor works beautifully in this. And what healing ultimately is in your body and in your life. It's a, it's a medical mesh unit moment. You run in. And the surgeons tape you up. Yeah. Suture you up. And say, get back out there. Yes, it's time to fight again. <laughs> healing in this life is a patchwork. It's a quick repair. So that you can continue to fight. Get back in the game. Keep moving towards Christ despite resistance of the world, of Satan, or any inhibition this life can throw at you. I could talk about it a thousand times over. Life offers us just because we're human. And Jesus said it very clearly. In this life you will have troubles. Yeah. I think he was just simply talking about the troubles of human life. Add to that all the aspects of modernity, which we've welcomed into our lives and made it harder even for us to live. All the conveniences of technology have opened up doors that seem to lead straight to hell in some opinion. Do not forget that beyond even these things, which are natural and normal to human life, that there are spiritual battles that are being waged in the spirit realm. Right now, pray. Joycey told me, ever since I was a teenager, 
She came to me the first missions trip that I ever went on, and she said, Scott, the moment you set foot into that country, never stop pleading the blood of Jesus over you, over your team, over your family, and everybody that's involved with this missions trip. Plead the blood of Jesus. And so this morning, we are not just going to practice this in part. But we are going to practice this in the whole. So this morning, um, last week we, we came as a church family all around Kim Lee and prayed for her. And this morning I would like to do that in the fashion uh, for Pastor Hammond uh, specifically and for Joycey also. And if you would like to be added to that group, that core group of people this morning uh, who are going to, the entire church is going to surround you. Uh, to be prayed for and to lay hands on, then uh, just just come forward, okay? If, if you're like, this is what I need, I need the church to bind with me in prayer and surround with me in prayer, then if that's you, just come to that group, okay? So Joycey and Pastor Hammond, would you come up? And what we're going to do is just like we did last week, the entire church, this is participation, meaning that you don't really have a choice. You have a choice, but you don't. But anyway... Everybody's going to come up in this congregation and surround you in prayer. That's what the church is. This is a one-piece altar call that's going to happen here. All right? And so everybody come forward, and we're going to lay hands on and uh, anoint with oil uh, Pastor Hammond and Joycey and pray for them. And then we're going to receive communion together. Come up here into the middle so that everybody can get around you. Remember, this is all about participation. We're not just going to talk about it. We're not just going to read about it. We're going to do what Jesus says to do. So would you, if you don't have the ability to lay hands immediately on these two, then lay hands on somebody that's laying hands on them. And so we're all together in this. Now let's pray right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you would touch Pastor Hammond. Lord, I pray that the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit would just begin to rest heavily on his life, Lord Jesus. Father, that healing would come, Lord, specifically over this issue of blood pressure. Lord, that you'd renew his body in the name of Jesus. Father, that your strength would be his strength. Lord, that your, your renewing power of the mind, Lord Jesus, would be over him and in him, Lord Jesus. Let your spirit abide in a new and a fresh way. Baptize him again in the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Lord, touch Joycey this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your Holy Spirit abide in a fresh and a new way. Renew her mind, Lord Jesus. Everything that the stroke took away of cognitive uh, uh, behavior and ability, uh, Lord Jesus, I pray that you would renew it and bring it back beyond even what the doctors think is possible, Lord Jesus, I pray. Father, touch your eyesight that she can see clearly, uh, Lord Jesus. Renew her body in the name of Jesus. Father, we rebuke any cancer, Lord Jesus. And Father, we pray in your precious name that, Lord, that she would have many, many more years upon this, Lord, this earth, Lord Jesus. And Father, that she would uh, glorify you in every way. And Father, that she continue her ministry of praying, interceding, Lord Jesus, and of uh, 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 teaching Lord Jesus about the baptism of the Holy Spirit an anointing that you gave her as a midwife of the Spirit Lord Jesus many years ago Father God Father pray that your strength would be her strength Lord Jesus that you would renew and that you would renew this body and spirit in the name of Jesus and Lord many others Father God some of them right here in the midst of this circle as we're all connected together that need they just need a renewing touch this morning. They need the strength of the Lord. They need empowerment to get back out there and fight. Lord, let this be the morning when they feel that strength this morning. Lord, touch Robin Herod this morning, Lord Jesus. She hadn't been feeling well. Father, I pray that you touch her, bring healing to her body in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Renew these bodies. Renew these spirits in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
Lord, touch the cold this morning, Lord Jesus. If she needs strength in her body, Father God. Renewal in her body, Lord Jesus. Healing in her body, in the name of Jesus. Touch and heal. Renew, Lord God, we pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you for participating. That's what this is all about. If you would, you can make your way back to your seats, and we are going to receive a communion. If somebody would uh, go get the kids and bring them in uh, for communion, I would appreciate it. invitation speaking of these terms of the spirit abiding in us it's the perfect invitation for you to literally take in Christ his body his blood sharing together one another this meal we share Christ we participate with Christ we take the word in and the word brings healing to our bodies amen we're just waiting for a brief moment for the kids to come in. Scripture says in Luke 22, as they prepared for the Passover, it says when the hour had come, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table and said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. And after taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink it again until the fruit of the vine comes anew in the kingdom of God. And he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup, this is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. This meal is a, is an incredible parallel back to Egypt when they left Egypt at the Passover. It was that moment when they celebrated this meal at the Passover that they were removed from Egypt and not a single one of them was feeble on the journey. That implies healing in and of itself. But it also makes us look forward into the day when we receive our new bodies. When Jesus comes, healing comes in his wings. The son of righteousness, Malachi says, will rise with healing in his wings. There will no be, be no more headaches, no more backaches, no disease, no cancer, no more pain. When you eat this bread, you claim your new body through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. When you drink this cup, you proclaim your new body. Jesus' body was broken for you so that you might live completely free. In part now, but in the future, in fullness. So let me give you a few more minutes to receive the elements. If you're joining us online at home, I would encourage you to go to the fridge and find uh, some juice and a piece of bread and uh, receive communion with us today. I need communion. 
misinterpreted my signs. <laughs> Has everybody received this morning, or is receiving? When I was growing up, it was not unusual that uh, the pastor would come find somebody and hand the microphone to them and ask them to pray over the elements. And then somebody would pray over the bread, and somebody would pray over the, the, the cup. And so I'm going to do that now. Brother Richard, would you pray over the bread as we break it and receive it together this morning? Father, we just want to thank you for the representation that we hold in our hands today of the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, let this be a, a special healing touch to somebody in this congregation this morning, Lord God. There's many needs here, and you know exactly what each one of us needs, Lord God. And let that spirit flow today, God. Bless the bread right now, Lord, as we partake of it, and let us remember that precious body that was broken for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Take the bread. Becca, would you pray over the cup this morning? Father, we thank you for your blood that was shed for us, that has washed away our sin. I pray, Lord, that as we remember the greatest sacrifice, that we thank you for all that it symbolizes our salvation, our healing, and we pray that you would bless it today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Take the cup. Now just begin to thank the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your body and your blood that was poured out for us, broken for us. Lord, that we might be whole, not only in spirit, but in body, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that the renewing power of the Holy Spirit would just begin to fill our lives. And we have taken you into us, Lord God, this morning. Let your grace abide in us. Let us abide in you, Lord Jesus. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, I pray, daily, Lord. Jesus, fill us with your spirit. We ask this in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Would you stand? Let's sing one last song as we depart. A thousand times I failed, still your mercy remains. And should I stumble again, and I'm caught in your grace everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all things. My heart and my soul, and I give you control. Come to me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise.
my heart and my soul, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out. That Lord, we just thank you so much that we can commune with you. Lord, I just ask that each and every one of us today opened up our hearts to let you in because it's a wonderful peace and you are a wonderful presence. Lord, I just right now put a blessing on this church. Help us to go out into this world and to be a light. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for who you are. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.